Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Backrooms Entity Explained video. I'm Brugly, and in this video, I bring you three more entities from the Backrooms lore. Hope you enjoy it, and let's get into it, shall we? Also, this is the first time I'm announcing this, but I will be doing a 500,000 subscriber live stream here on the Brugly channel. The second I hit 500k, I will be wearing the full Backrooms outfit when it happens. I'll be dripped out in that, and I'll be going live on the Brugly channel for everybody to join in. We can hang out for a few hours, and we'll celebrate. We'll play some Apirophobia, some games. It'll be a fun time. So stay tuned for that. Turn your notice on if you want to be a part of it. Anyways, let's get into the video, shall we? So first up for this video is Entity 987, aka the God on level 532. And this entity is deeply ingrained into the Backroom's history and lore because it seems to be very similar to a god that exists in ancient texts that have been found in the Backrooms. I'll leave the full article linked below. Go check it out if you want to see how it is so ingrained because it's crazy and you should check it out. But to keep it simple, I'll go over the basics here. Backrooms Entity 987 is classified as an IETS rating of 5B which means it's extremely dangerous to humans and highly intelligent. Now, the actual creature itself is a humanoid-type entity that was actually found locked inside of a small room on level 532. In this small room is a prison cell. Its skin is dark gray, and it looks really old and worn. It only wears a ripped-up robe from head to toe, and its face is really smooth with no facial features, except for one blue eye in the middle. It doesn't even have a mouth, but somehow it can talk, and it doesn't just speak English, it can speak most human languages. The entity seems to not be able to escape the cell it's locked in, except it can, and I'll explain in a second. But everyone should avoid this cell at all costs, because every time somebody goes there, something bad happens. Now there is an entity log between someone and the entity on this page, and that someone is a MEG officer named David Armstrong. And David Armstrong was supposed to go to this entity, approach it, and ask a few questions about making a deal so Meg could see how this entity would respond to bribes and questioning. Now Armstrong went into the room alone, right in front of the prison cell, and other people waited outside of the room to see what would happen. After Armstrong introduces himself to the entity, even though the entity already knew his name, he asks the entity if he can grant Armstrong eternal life. So he's pretty much saying, you know, are you powerful enough to give me eternal life? The entity says that he can, and the doctor wants to do a handshake to seal the deal. So he sticks his hand through the prison door, and the entity grabs to shake his hand back. Except, this electrocutes the doctor and makes his body fall to the floor. Then the entity's body slumps back into the cell, but the doctor gets up and turns around and looks at the entity in the cell and says, quote, have fun with your immortality, David, and then walks up the stairs, leaving the mind and the soul of the doctor trapped in the body of the entity in the cell. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I guess the entity is free now in the body of Dr. Armstrong. Or maybe he could have already moved to another body. Who knows? Next up for the video is Entity 45, or the Chupa Vitas. This entity has an IETS rating of 3B+, which means that they're pretty smart and they're really dangerous. These creatures were originally thought to be legends or ghost stories or made up because of how they look, but we're pretty sure they're real. They take the form of ghostly humanoids that are sitting around a campfire, bonfire type thing. Except that isn't actually what they look like, that's just what they show themselves as and they do this in order to lure prey to them. And if you're smart, you might notice that some things seem off about this scene. The fire that they're supposedly sitting around doesn't actually give out any heat. Instead, it actually seems to take warmth away from anybody who goes near it, and that will make you weaker. Now, these entities normally appear near places that people don't really go to and entities don't really go to. That way, they kind of seem more out in the middle of nowhere. And for this reason, it was originally thought that they weren't even real. Now, these creatures are even more powerful than making a fake fire, though. They can also transform themselves to look like normal people and even talk like them, too. When a real wanderer comes to this fire and is lured in to sit down with them, they'll sit down and they'll be under the illusion that they're getting warmer and relaxing and they're talking with these random people. Since the Chupavita can show themselves as real humans, a wanderer would just think they're talking to random strangers. When in reality, the fire they're sitting at is taking their warmth and their life force, and the entities sitting around are not friendly. 
they try to convince you to stay there longer and longer by telling stories and saying, oh, don't go, but they make you stay even longer to take your life force. Some people have been able to escape the trap in the middle of it, but if they do, they seem to have big chunks of their memories missing, or even parts of their identity missing too. Like, you can't even remember half your stuff at that point. A long time ago, these creatures could barely mimic human speech, and people always avoided them. But it seems like over time, they've gotten more and more smart, and even more bold in luring people over. Which is kind of creepy that they're evolving. Now lastly for the video is an entity called the Keymaster. Now I did talk very shortly about this one last year, but a lot more has been discovered and here's what we have. The Keymaster, or Entity X, is a powerful mystical creature that lives in the hub level as a sort of overseer. He's known for his ability to manifest keys, specifically level keys, to people in the back rooms and then help those people out of levels that they're stuck in. Now, the Keymaster has pretty much been seen everywhere at some point in every level, but is never in one place for long enough to get too much information. It kind of just appears and then leaves. The physical entity is a tall male humanoid with long, dark hair. And when I say tall, I mean literally 6 feet 10 inches tall, at least. And he's got his famous black cloak that covers every part of his body except the upper part of his face. And there's also a ghostly black smoke that hovers at his lower half. On the side of his cloak, he has a huge key ring of old fancy looking keys. And these are the level keys that he produces. The entity is pretty quiet and soft-spoken and kind of avoids really talking. And when he does talk, he kind of seems to be confused or tired, but he definitely knows what he's doing. The creature is neutral towards all wanderers and even neutral towards entities, but he will leave if he's provoked. Almost like he knows nothing can hurt him. He's not scared of anything. By all accounts, he actually can't be destroyed. And even if he is destroyed, he'll come back later just like normal. Now, the Keymaster's most obvious ability is to manifest these level keys in his hand. Like, they just materialize out of nowhere. It's not known where they come from, if he's got some secret storage locker full of keys, or if he's literally making keys. And there are a few theories about that, which I'll get into now. The first one is the Wanderer Theory, which just says that he used to be a wanderer that somehow became the Keymaster. Simple as that. The next theory is the Cloak Theory, which says that there's more than one Keymaster, and they all get their abilities to do what they do, travel between levels, and manifest keys from the cloaks they wear. And every time a cloak is found, a new Keymaster is made. Interesting. The next theory is the experiment theory, which is just like the name says. It says that the entity was made from some sort of experiment by a greater backroom's power, maybe an entity, maybe a creator of some kind, who knows. The last theory is the deity theory, which says that the Keymaster is some sort of force of nature and is tied to the very backrooms itself since he can seemingly go through every level with ease. None of the theories are proven, but let me know which one you think it is. Now, there's actually some really deep lore about the Keymaster, like tinfoil hat type lore, specifically his involvement in the ancient civilizations that apparently lived here in the backrooms a long time ago. And I'm going to get into that lore now. Now, in the ancient times of the backrooms, the Keymaster was actually a deity named the Gatekeeper, who was worshipped by a civilization of the earliest people that actually got to the backrooms uh, called the Lost. Now this the lost civilization worshipped the gatekeeper who was part of a larger group of gods who apparently created the backrooms in the lost religion and they were all quote unquote siblings other members of these gods were the game master blanche the red knight and many more now supposedly after a long time of oppressing and mistreating things that these gods were doing the humans eventually revolted against the gods and the gatekeeper or key master was actually poisoned by one of his own worshippers. And this is where Key comes in. Now, Key is one of 24 eternal forces that was responsible for the creation of everything. Keep in mind, this is all in the religion of the lost colony in the backrooms. So it could be crazy, or it could be real. This Key was disappointed in the failure of its avatar, but it decided to use this opportunity to innovate and move forward. So it took the remains of the gatekeeper, which was just poisoned, and infused his essence into its cloak. And this cloak then became a symbolic part of it that would latch on to the most compatible host that it could find. 
And when the cloak got to a person, the person would then gain some of the gatekeeper's powers and personality, but also it would erase their own identity. This new being is called the Keymaster, and over the years, many people wore the cloak and held the title of Keymaster. And when they did that, they were completely immortal. However, the cloak always ends up rejecting its own host at a certain point, deeming them unworthy and incompatible. And when this happened, the host would then be terminated and the cloak would pass on to the next worthy person. It's thought that the current person wearing the cloak has been Keymaster since 2014, and he's currently in the process of uncovering the past of the Gatekeeper being. Now, there is so much more lore about the Keymaster, the Gatekeeper, the Lost, the key, all this stuff. Check the links below. Literally go check it out. It's, yeah, it's actually insane. All right, that was it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this Entity video, leave a like. Let me know if you want more. There's always more Entities to go over. You all love the Entity videos, and I thank you for that. Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be doing a 500,000 subscriber live stream here on Brugly the second I hit 500,000 subscribers. And in that live stream, I'll be wearing my backrooms outfit, all that kind of stuff. I'll be talking to you guys. We'll be just be relaxing, celebrating the milestone. I'll be thanking you all, and we'll just be going over some awesome stuff, some memories. We'll be looking at everything, guys. It'll be fun. If you want to do that, if you want to turn into that, just make sure you turn your post notes on. I'll announce it when it happens. If you don't have them on, but you should turn them on. Thank you for everything. Make sure to go check out Toogly. I live stream several times a week and upload all the time over there. It's a great time. We're going crazy with stuff over there. I'm going to be doing a Halloween live stream, especially on there. We're going to be playing up here a phobia and some other horror games like Friday the 13th. It's going to be great. Just go to Toogly if you want that kind of stuff. All the YouTube stuff is going amazing. Thank you all so much for your support. I love and appreciate every one of you, and I will see you in the next video.